Hey, what's up guys? It's Dallin here again. I'm back with another automotive video talking about how to fix things. So today I'm looking at a 97 F-150 that has the four-wheel drive disabled. We're going to be talking about how to diagnose it and some of the processes that I'm going to go through to get it working again. That's the ultimate goal. This truck's going to be for someone that I know. We're just going to try to get it working. The, right now the four-wheel drive will not engage. It just won't. It only stays in two-wheel drive even when the indicator shows. Um, I'm going to go through the different processes on how to like figure out what's wrong with it because that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to get into that now. Okay, so one of the very first things you need to check are these two hoses right here. I'm going to get into that in just a second. But this is your vacuum for your four-wheel drive and your two-wheel drive system in here. There's the electronic portion and then there's the vacuum portion underneath. We're going to be paying attention to the vacuum portion first because I believe that's what the problem is. And when you flip it over, I'll show you the piece under the truck that it will switch. So if you go under the truck here, just down underneath the fender, and if you crawl on under here, you can see here's your oil pan. Here's your front axle that leads to your tire. And then this right here is your four-wheel drive actuator. Now if you look here, this little piece will move. When you put it in four, it'll go in. And when you take it out, it'll come out. Right now it's stuck here. No matter what we do, it won't change. But if you're diagnosing this, this piece should go in and out. As well as there's two vacuum cables. <laughs> there's two vacuum hoses on top that go right here. And this is where it comes down from the top of the truck that I showed you earlier into, into the actuator which signals to the differential to switch. We're going to be trying to figure out why this isn't switching because as I mentioned we tested it, this doesn't move at all. So I'm going to start with the vacuum at the top. So for this test the truck has to be running in order to get the vacuum pressure so I'm just going to start it up and then show you basically what we're going to do. Actually I'll show you before I start it so we don't have the noise. Okay so inside here you have these two connections here which are your electrical. I went ahead and pulled these off to make it easier to get to the vacuum. So directly under this one you're going to have these two vacuum cable line things here and you're going to be checking for vacuum here. You want to see if there's any suction on the first one, the top one here. So if there's suction on the top one that means vacuum's coming in. Same with the other side if you just go underneath the other side. This one here you want to check if there's vacuum coming out of these. If so that means everything up to this point is working and it's down the line from here. Um, so there's a cable or line basically these hoses right here that run down to the actuator below that I showed you. Um, if you're getting vacuum here that's where it is. If you're not then it has to be up behind the battery which is what I suspect. So we're going to look into that now. I'm going to start the truck and feel if there's any vacuum. Okay, so in that portion of the test, there was definitely a positive vacuum coming from those. Um, it's still in park. What I'm going to do now, it needs to work, obviously. <laughs> but I'm going to just flip it into four, high. And as you can see, the little indication down here comes, uh, comes on. So we can tell up here everything's working, as far as I know. So from here, we're going to go down the line and see if there's vacuum coming from below. If there's not, that would either mean an electrical problem or we're having issues with uh, the vacuum line through. If there's no vacuum down there... Um, we could have a hole in the line or it's an electrical problem. I'm praying to Jesus right now that it's not an electrical problem, but we always diagnose the simpler thing first, which in this case is going to be the vacuum. So I'm going to go down to those actuators and see if I feel anything, and we're going to hope for the best. Okay, so now that we're under the truck, these are our vacuum lines that connect up there. In both two-wheel drive, which I believe is this pink one, and four-wheel drive, which is this one, I felt vacuum on both of these. It made the hiss noise. That would make me believe that it might be this actuator here that has a problem in it. I'm going to take this off and see if I can see any problems from here on. But this is what I would really suspect because everything from here up seems to be working. Maybe a little weak, but enough to engage and disengage four-wheel drive. So I'm going to take this off and see if I can see a problem inside of here. Um, and then we're going to go from there. That's the only thing I can see being the problem next is this actuator. So we'll have to see. Alright, so the footage you just saw was recorded literally a little over a year ago now. The problem was the actuator after all. I took it off the truck and brought it down and it ended up having a whole bunch of like black fluid in it that was kind of sticky. It was completely seized. The actuator itself, I pulled the little piston in it, it would not move at all. There's no way that little lever couldn't move. Every time I pushed it, it would squirt black fluid out, so the actuator itself was completely dead. I wanted to get some video footage of this at the time, again, a year later, but the issue's never been fixed. I left it out to show the guy that, hey, yeah, that's the part that's bad, you know, here's the model number and everything. I think he ended up putting it back in and it still doesn't have four-wheel drive. The actuator is about $100 on Amazon. 
I don't know why he didn't replace it, but that did end up being the issue. Our diagnosis was correct. And so, yeah, there you go. That's a quick, simple little diagnosis on a four-wheel drive on a 97 F-150. As always, comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.